I hope y'all are having an amazing day. Thank you, Miss Lux, for requesting this video. You know, when I first started with the land and putting the manufacturer home on property, on developed property, I didn't know what to do either. I kind of learned as I went through it and there was a lot of headaches along the way and afterwards if you've seen the videos about the house or whatever. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. Before you buy your manufactured home, you need to make sure that you have land to put it on. Now there's two different kinds of ways you can do it. You can buy your own property and if it's outside of city limits, it gets pricey. If it's inside of city limits, you can hook up to the well that they have, which is most likely a community well or city water. You can hook your toilet up to the city sewage and stuff like that. So what we did was we found our own property. Now, a lot of manufactured home companies don't advertise it, but they do actually offer land when you purchase your manufactured home. So they will find the land for you. They will get the manufactured home. They will get your septic. They'll get your well, electric, all that with their own contractor, or you can do it yourself. Now you also have to remember a lot of these manufactured homes, um, people make a commission off of their sale. So you're probably going to be paying over what you initially thought that you were going to be paying. What we did was we were offered the contractor that worked with the manufactured home place that we got ours, which was Clayton. Now this contractor, I don't think he really knew anything about property lines, easements and stuff like that. So we had purchased our land, had him come out, he mowed and he put a pad out for us. Now the pad is basically dirt. You can either do dirt or you can do concrete. We did dirt because there's really no reason to do concrete in all honesty. So that was 2,500. I'm not exactly 100% sure how much the pad of dirt costs by itself, but this was all within dirt, mowing the property, and that was pretty much it. We are lucky enough to have a opening where we could fit our manufacturer at home without having to go and clear a bunch of trees. So once we bought our property, we rented back the house we were staying in for six weeks. We were hoping all this would be done within a month, but it wasn't. So we ended up renting back for six weeks. Then we went and purchased our manufactured home. We had had the manufactured home on a contingency. That way it would not get sold. We got one off the lot. That way they didn't have to make one and then ship one later on because those actually get more expensive. So in all, in total, we spent $63,000 on a four bedroom manufactured home. And it's pretty big. We had a four bedroom house that we had lived in before and we did not want to scale down to something super tiny because we still have family that comes and visits. So once we bought our manufactured home, and they had brought it and put it on the property where we wanted it on the pad we had to get a septic installed a well installed and electric installed the first thing we had to get was the electric because the electric runs everything the manufactured home is all electric from appliances like everything inside the house is electric we don't have any propane no gas nothing and we're outside of city limits, so we don't have uh, city water, we don't have city uh, sewage. So now this is where it gets super costly. The well, they dug the well, and the normal footage of where you're supposed to get water 
um, we did not get enough water to sustain our home, so they had to go deeper, which cost more money. So in total, we spent over $10,000 on our well alone. And that included hookups and everything. Now the septic was 6,900. So that was, that did not include hookups. And that was for a four bedroom home. And we have the uh, aerobic septic, which in the long run will cost you less to maintain. It basically, it cleans itself. Basically the bacteria eats away the toilet paper and then the water, it sprays the water out into the yard. You just put chlorine tablets in there. So all the water that comes through the house goes into the septic tank. From your shower, everything, everything gets put into the septic tank. And then once it fills up, you have your spray heads and it waters your yard. Now, the electric was $6,000. That included a new box, circuits, and breakers. The manufacturer home already has a breaker box, but we just had to get main shutoffs on the main pole to the property. And then we also bought a shed, a $6,000 shed, which has a carport underneath it and a, an enclosed area. That way we could put you know our mower and all of our stuff in there but we have two lights on there and then we have outdoor light indoor light and then cables all running through underground and pvc everything else on the shed is ran up through the steel pipe so that was pretty much it what we had to do to get this house set out on property was find the property first purchase the property clean the property up enough to where you can put the manufacturer home order the dirt once you get your dirt set then you can put your manufactured home on it it still takes a while once you get a home put on there because they have to go inside and make sure every everything is in order your trim is on and you have to make sure that certain things were put together ours was just so compact time wise that i don't think they actually got time to do that they had to come once we were already living here and redo our tile in the kitchen because a lot of pieces fell off from moving it there was a lot of stuff that had to get done afterwards and there was still stuff even when <clears throat> they were arguing with me about doing things even though we were still within our warranty um, I ended up just doing myself because it was getting to be a headache having to deal with these people other than having to just do it myself I would say that my friends were more lucky than I was when it came to dealing with Clayton they went to a certain one and they actually had very good luck very good people good contractors and everything so I think that it was just our luck that we went to probably the wrong one and dealt with the wrong people so also I wanted to say that there are not any gutters on your manufacturer home usually you need to make sure that's one thing you check because it will cause algae on the outside of your house once it rains or after a while which is fine I mean you can always spray it off but if you look into groundwater conservation you can find that they do classes for groundwater conservation if you decide that you want to do green water if you do green water you can actually get a grant once you get your gutters on, once you get your green water system tank set up, and if you decide that you want to do like some gardening or big farming or whatever, you can actually get a grant that will pay back all of that stuff. So it'll save you money in the long run. I also forgot to mention that a lot of these companies need permits. That's one thing you're gonna have to factor into the price as well is permits. 
Water, we needed permit. Septic, we needed permit. But electric, we did not need a permit. So groundwater conservation is a huge thing that's throughout the whole United States, not just Texas alone. So they will be, they will not actually do your well unless you have that permit. And a lot of the times, some places will get the permit themselves, but the p place we went to, we actually got the permit. Um, the company we were working with just kind of hurried them along because we were on a very big time crunch. We had a month, which getting everything set actually took longer than a month. We had two more weeks and we were like literally at the deadline of two weeks and we moved in before we actually got water running. So thank you guys for watching. I will talk to y'all later. Peace out. Bye.